Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. It brings me great honor to introduce Dr. Maria Ian. And Dr. Ian, this is part three of you being welcomed on The Infinite Way. We're so excited to have you. Well, I'm, it's a, it's a, always a wonderful and beautiful experience to be here in Olia. And I I, I tremendously appreciate your, your welcome and um, thank you so much for having me. So just to give your introduction as a law firm project manager professional from 2003 to 2018, <laughs> Dr. Maria Ian developed and implemented cutting edge law firm in legislative, domestic and international immigration and refugee related projects, including training, mentoring, and supervision of staff. Her primary area of responsibility included casework on behalf of non-governmental organization clients and coalitions involving congressional and administrative advocacy. For this, she managed several national coalitions and non-governmental and governmental agencies and organizations and parties. She played an integral role in complex and high profile federal and international human rights cases. As the producer of regional television show and managing editor for a niche publisher focused on national security and human rights, she contributed an innovative written and video resource development. Her over two dozen books and reference volumes were sold to libraries internationally. After 2018, Dr. Maria Ian incorporated her law firm experience with her additional two decades of experience in medical research, field and counseling. She developed the training Thrive Boldly and Tell Your Life Story, the total fear eradicated to boundless business for high impact business professionals. This training harnesses the power of cognitive and behavioral science and of ancestral healing for those who want to take the extra step to rewire mind and release fear and trauma that is holding you back from complete self-actualization. She has counseled and trained over 50 persons to represent their best selves in her professional life. Recently, Dr. Maria Ian created two medical science, health and fitness books, and as a creative writer, the psychological thriller and legal fiction series. In the 1990s, she worked in event management and fundraising for an international civil sustainability nonprofit organization. Dr. Maria Ian has her PhD in political science and a JD in law. She is a certified personal trainer and a certified nutritionist. She has six professional certifications in health and fitness and six professional certifications in traditional Chinese medicine, along with several professional certifications in trauma counseling. I welcome Dr. Maria Ian. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great pleasure to be here. Yeah. Thank you for being here. And today our topic of conversation is emotions. And I would love to start it off with how you choose to define emotions. How do you see emotions defined? Um, well, I I studied emotions uh, in depth um, because uh, they are highly important to uh, trauma recovery and um, and self hypnosis. One thing I, I just want to say up front is the um, the current definition contemporary definition of contemporary psychology contemporary medicine that i've been able to locate and you know that i have you know and i'm, I'm sure everybody who's interested in personal development has you know found associated with personal development courses and psychology and therapy is one also that's you know endorsed by the american psychological association because it's on their website but also, it's not has nothing to do with only the United States. Also, Western Europe, you know, it's it's the same, um, you know, the, the same idea, I think, um, which is that emotions are conscious mental reactions such as anger or fear. That's the two examples given, which is very revealing, as we'll discuss. 
subjectively experienced, usually directed towards a specific object and typically accompanied by physiological and behavioral changes in the body, right? Now, there are two, and I'm sure everybody who's listening can 200% grasp grasp this definition, identify with it, because that's pretty much the, our contemporary, contemporary one. Now, there are two very big problems with that definition, right? <clears throat> the first one is that also according to contemporary science, even though that's maybe more on the uh, quantum mechanics side, um, we humans, we can think about a situation, about any situation, whether it's a good or a bad one. And we can think about it so thoroughly that we can experience the emotion that goes with that as if that event were actually occurring, right? So, so what does that mean? It, it means we're not being very helpful in terms of um, personal development, in terms of self-care, in terms of self-healing, in, ter in terms of um, stress, anti-stress methods we want to apply because it doesn't matter if we think about a beautiful event, something we really want to want to have, such as an accomplishment or like a beautiful time we spend with our family or a beautiful house we want to purchase. Or if we think about a horrible event, such as killing somebody or, or like doing God knows what horrible thing. And really our the level that we are discussing this at, the subjectivity level, that level does not distinguish between these two events. You're going to experience the emotion associated with that event as strongly as if you were actually happen as if that event were actually happening right um right right so so it, it doesn't help us um it, it doesn't help us develop at all right it's 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 purely subjective and um it's a it's basically a dead end street now it's highly revealing that here they're mentioning anger or fear right that's the two mm -hmm. examples they're giving. And mm -hmm. it's it's perfectly normal and it to be expected that this kind of definition would have those two examples in it. Why? Be because we humans at that subjective level, without accounting for where emotions are just conscious mental reactions, right? Without accounting for our higher self, without accounting for any higher awareness, at that level, anger or fear is what we are naturally going to experience, right? So it, it's it's sort right. of a, right. It's a very circular, it's a very circular argument. Now, because we humans, we are so constituted as to keep ourselves primarily, and I, I think you and I may have discussed the survival mind before. We, we may have, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we have, right we want to evolve like we, we want to evolve throughout history you evolve from from cave times through modern times to all kinds of evolutions and we couldn't have e developed if we would not have kept ourselves safe right we, we need that we need to think ourselves we need to think about ourselves in terms of having some place to live having having food to eat you know having people around us that make us feel you know safe so we need that that's highly crucial but, you know, at the same time, we humans have this, this motivation to excel, right? We want to create great things, right? We want to you know, embrace a new horizon, find, you know, find, um, find some new ideas, new innovations, right? And humanity is full, like the whole technological revolution wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't be on the internet today. If somebody hadn't put themselves out there and said, hey, I'm going to, you know, groups of people, I'm going to take this step and come up with an internet and, you know, it's something extraordinary if you think of it, right? And, and right, this, right. Yeah. So, and this, okay, dichotomy, okay. Right? this dichotomy 
this safety and this ex desire to excel puts us precisely in a state of fear and anger because we fear life. I mean, that's just mm -hmm. how we made. We fear life. Right? We are angry at the environment that we feel is threatening us because we cannot deal with our desire to create great and marvelous things. So now to say that emotions are conscious mental reactions such as anger or fear just repeats you know, that subjective survival mind experience that humanity has had since its inception um, mm -hmm. in human history. And it says it's okay to just be like that. And it's not okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay. No, 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 no. I want to make sure that you got your complete uh, thought out. And I, I have to agree with you because, you know, isn't that why we have coaching? People are stuck in their stories. They are circling around over and over and over again, stuck in the story. They're reliving the negativity of their past. Mm -hmm. The negativity of their past defines their future. So then what happens is that we are really set up in a system that that keeps us stuck, that perceives us to be stuck, and that actually sets up a framework so that we are stuck because it's, oh, well, let's review your fears and your traumas and everything else, you know, so that we can uh, work on the emotions of why you're stuck right here and now, and then that perpetuality of going back and then revisiting it instead of moving past and navigating past or through the emotions that are holding you back in the first place doesn't take place. It is just a uh, irony of, of, of a definition. Things that help us cultivate to grow, we move past our fears. Things that help us cultivate being a better person is the excitement we glean and the creativity that we glean when we move past that boundary of this is where I operate. This is the way it always is. This is where I feel safe. It's that uh, ability to, to not know what the future is and going beyond the boundaries to the unknown that brings excitement into the life that helps us grow, that helps us expand, discover, navigate through scenarios that, oh, this is status quo. I know this. Let me get that quickly behind me so that I can do something different. And that's the yes. part of the emotional state that we tap into, whether it's bliss or even if it's not so blissful and it's it's hard, but we go through those challenges still growing. And yes. it's imperative that we go beyond these, these predefined cognitive statements mm -hmm, <laughs> to mm -hmm. be better human beings mm -hmm. what are your what are your thoughts yes well um i agree um completely and um i want to add something that is as fast fascinating fascinating to me um because as a somebody who has studied uh, traditional chinese medicine and also mm -hmm. has found correspondence to quantum mechanics and i, I mean i think this is just extraordinarily important that this should just be discussed everywhere you know quantum mechanics and traditional chinese medicine are very much on a, on a, on a par in what they're finding right our each of our organs like our heart lung liver you know all of those have energetic vibrations right and have their own emotions associated with with those because emotions are energy in motion right now for example liver and sadness right or liver and anger is is something that many many women um you know suffer from liver conditions because they are stuck in a in a corporate rut um where sadness and anger is sort of the suppressed the the outcome of the suppressed emotional states they're in so that's why liver conditions um for women are you know, are, are, are very, very prevalent. Um, but here, here comes a fascinating thing because it, quantum mechanics and traditional Chinese medicine, they don't remain stuck on this level of saying, okay, each organ has its own energetic vibration and therefore has its own emotion, right? So when we're treating a, 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 a condition, we have to treat the emotions first. They, they don't remain stuck, stuck on that level. It goes one step beyond because the our metabolism function which is the the chemical reaction in our three trillion um, bodies cells that changes food into energy right 
without which we humans, we cannot, without, we cannot do anything. We cannot breathe, we cannot digest, we cannot sleep, right? So the metabolism function is the one primary thing that we need even to move an arm, even to speak, to do absolutely anything, right? Now, that particular function, even though it's in the body, so it's a, it's a, it's a physical experience, is not controlled by any physical organ right yeah. it is a manifest yeah. right so it is a manifestation of the energy vibrations that create and sustain us in the universe it's like the biggest part of us right and it is that which connects us back to source and i did another a presentation with with a with a lady exactly on on this specific uh, dynamic right of how we mm -hmm. are and I, yeah. know you and I we spoke about this before how we are created at source we are creation we are created by by the energy in the universe right so this metabolism function is the the most direct manifestation of that creation and is also that which in the purest sense is an emotional vibration right and as a um qigong practitioners or tao practitioners um will tell you a person knows then that their energy framework is um i hate the word framework that their energy that the comp that the overall comprehensivity of their energy pathways is in order when they experience joy joy like a breath of fresh air you know, that's really the highest spiritual, emotional vibration that we humans can experience is joy, right? Um, right. So, yes. So um, I want to put, put this out there and show the extraordinary distinction with this contemporary medical Western thing about um, emotions as conscious mental reactions, such as anger or fear, subjectively experienced and directed towards a specific object because the true definition of our emotion is the exact reverse of that it's not a conscious mental reaction it's a highest level spiritual effusion if you will such as joy it is not subjectively experienced because it unites all of humanity all humans in spirit are that way and it is not directed toward a specific object because it is directed towards our source in the universe. It's our center of higher awareness. And down the last part, typically accompanied by physiological and behavior changes in the body. That is true, but we are talking about very different changes <laughs> than the anger or fear. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. 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 So I... I just, I hope I, I was able to clearly demonstrate the total opposition between these two definitions and the fact that the energetic vibrations one has, you know, it's, it's verified by quantum mechanics, traditional Chinese medicine going back thousands of years. Thousands of years, yes. So, you know. Unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So agree with you and you know what happens is that we forget the human condition and the capabilities that the human body has and some of the simplest little tasks and I love doing a little exercise that mm -hmm. actually proves the point of what you're saying which is that I ask people to close their eyes and then I ask them to just go into their heart space just go inside and then I ask them to start removing the roles of the human condition Mm -hmm. So you are no longer anybody's mother. You are no longer anybody's daughter or father mm -hmm. or son. You are mm -hmm. no longer anybody's employee and employer. You are no longer any of these roles that the human condition puts on you. And then when you realize that you can take all of these roles off and you really come into that space of, well, what are you and who are you, right? Well, I am energy. Because without the human condition placing roles and characteristics on us, there's nothing left but energy. 
Right. Right. And pure energy is that joy, that beauty, that love, mm -hmm. expansive in you that gets to expand, that just gets to be. If we could just take the mind and the and we strip away all of the stuff that we place on top of it to say that we're this. And I I love doing this exercise because really that pure energy is just pure light, pure love, right? That emotion of love is what vibrates, right? Because there's nothing else there. There's no human condition to say this thing is bad. This thing is wrong. All of that's stripped away, right? Because there are no roles. There are no exactly. pieces. Uh, but you are saying that from the center of higher awareness, because the the the, the yeah. psychological one also has no good and bad either. But it it it, it, it you know it, it operates from a lower level of action reaction a lower level so correct is, yes correct mm -hmm. but bringing people back to that thought process to me is just like a, a proof of that higher awareness the higher condition that we have the capability to embrace expand partake in and be you know mm -hmm. at every part of our being so mm -hmm. I don't know that that's my way of proving that 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 quantum mechanics piece that says just just be it just do it you know have the proof in self and and feel the difference between that lower level definition of okay you know anger fear etc you know and here I am and I'm stuck and this is how it is versus the capability of when you strip all of that away and you feel that that expansiveness within and mm -hmm. and and the differences between that and this is just reality. This is what our capabilities are. Yeah. Uh, well, you and I are entirely on the same same plate in terms of our approach to coaching. It's just that <laughs> the method the method we employ uh, methods are different. Because you your ref your references to the stripping away and what I, I'm doing is the deep dive into the subconscious and and exactly. unravel the energy. So <laughs> We agree. And then I love it because it's really taking that beautiful high level approach, thought and definition that you define it and breaking it down for the simplicity of the public to take in bite sized chunks and actually encounter to truly embrace what you're saying. And then what they've done is they've experienced your definition and it's beautiful. Yes, it's beautiful. It is joy see humanity at, at its highest is is joy is the emotion of joy and which is a, a reflection of our creation in the universe so at our highest and our at our most basic we are the same and mm -hmm. and, and that is a, a medical and a scientific truth right so one just has to be very very wary of of anybody who you know has this emphasizes in any any way subjectivity anger or fear yes. and mental reactions those are the bad terms I'm, I'm, I'm reading from this definition that's everywhere on the internet those are the terms to be very wary of mental reactions subjectivity and anger or fear all that rest restates the survival mind without anything further it actually lowers us lower than the animals right it, it makes us even worse right. than animals because even animals have higher energetic vibrations right? <laughs> <laughs> so it, I, I was just i was reading this and i was what is this is nefarious this is i don't want to like to use the word nefarious but i i was i was just like how can you put this on the website of an association and you know, I I've encountered it everywhere else. Like you were saying, this this more mainstream personal development attitude that's just like, okay, you experience this and then go back and find where else you experienced it. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. No, no, mm -hmm. no, no. And uh, I just want to um, give one example, which 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 I think the one with with aging. Um, okay. With, <laughs> which I think is actually a funny one, even though it's also a very serious one. Um, but, um, you know, all that happens, and I want to talk about 
about uh, women here because that's what I've and at men men it's also very very similar but I can't really give a concrete example of of men right now because I wasn't thinking about that um uh, recently I was thinking about this you know menopause problem that okay. when women have, what when women have what we define as menopausal symptoms such as hot flashes high blood pressure weight gain anger irritability frustrations when they have them it's it's a sign of a very premature and defective energy pathways breakdown right now for some reason contemporary medicine has affixed the label of menopause to that right 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 now if you don't preventively or in terms of self-healing address those symptoms they will then lead to premature aging right or bad aging you know aging with many diseases with right many caps, with many other other things right now it's highly interesting that when you go to see a doctor at least that happened in my case and i've heard and observed it happen to other women also i don't know i mean i've heard and observed it happen to a sufficiently large number of women that i can say with some level of confidence that that's maybe is the approach of contemporary medicine to that female condition right when when you go right. and see, see a doctor and you have these symptoms like you have high blood pressure you've got weight gain you're angry you, you're irritated you have the problems with your menstrual cycle that come because of the fear and stress that, that that you're under even though nobody explains it that way but that's the truth of why you're having these menstrual, yeah. menstrual cycle mm -hmm. problems right the attitude is oh oh no it's okay because it's age related it's aging you know it's 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 fine you just need to to keep you know keep keep it to yourself be quiet you know just let it go go with the flow it's a natural progress progression. And when I when I first heard that, I, my first thought was, well, why did no other woman in my family experience that? Well, because they didn't live in the Western civilized this kind of thing environment. That's why, right? But that was my first That's thought. Like, why? <laughs> what? I'm aging. My grandmother at the age of 100 wasn't aging, but I'm aging at the age of 40. I said, okay, that's interesting. Let me think about this um so now here here's the truth what really happens mm -hmm. with women in menopause it's end of period it's the end of menstrual cycle right the, the energy that <clears throat> went between puberty and menopause which which is only a couple of decades is by far not an entire lifespan by far it's only a couple of decades mm -hmm the energy that went into um, producing eggs and then menstruating changes as all kinds of energy pathways that we have throughout life, they change. So in and of itself, right, right it's not something that really should, should throw anyone's world upside down. But there's also research has shown that that change if you are conscious of it, if you listen to it, if you train yourself how to direct it, can be highly beneficial because it now can develop, can go to develop higher level cognitive function. Like there have been research showing that postmenopausal women, they become very spiritual, they become very creative, they they are able to you know do creative endeavors they were not able to do before some women mm -hmm. actually also it and i know this this may sound very outrageous and but i have seen it happen i've researched it i've done it on myself F fitness physical fitness will postmenopausal women have and i know this sounds outrageous but i'm going to say it because it's true have more energy for physical fitness at their disposal and can in theory mm -hmm. be more physically fit okay now 
what does that tell us? That tell us that the energy pathways we discussed previously, you know, they rise higher to our center of higher awareness, joyfulness, where we can embrace life with joy, right? We can now be creative. We can be physically fit. We change our diets also. We, we experience new foods, which can be extraordinary in itself because, you know, also other, and I mean, this gets too specific and I have some of that in my book, but also other organs can also work better. Like I know my lung function improved after menopause. I mean, I, I could breathe much okay. more freely and, and I could, you know, like I don't have as many hesitations speaking because I just feel fear from, from, from this part here, which is the San Jo meridian, right? Which is the energy meridian. Um, so what happens to us and men also, it's just a different progression, right? But what happens to us is the opposite of what <laughs> these medical professionals again say in terms of, oh no, exactly quiet and safe and it's just it's natural it's aging you know it happens it it just it'll be like that it's you'll never be the same again i've had some women cry and like i will never be the same again i've lost my life i'm over i'm done and this is all just a mindset yes. it's a mindset that tells you that once you reach a certain age once you come to a certain place in life expect these, these things. And then so psychologically, we take on the emotion of approaching that age and the emotion of saying, okay, everybody in society says, this is the bridge that I'm gonna get, or the doctor says, this is the bridge that I'm gonna have. And that, okay, because I'm sweating, it's just gonna go downhill from here and I just gotta deal with it and there's nothing I can do yes. or my hormones yes. are never gonna be again. All these negative things and what do we do? We we, we embrace it lock, stock, and barrel. Having gone through menopause myself, I'm going to tell you, I know that we get, I, at least I got more energy because that's when I started traveling all over the world. That's go. when I started embracing the parts of my life that I always dreamed about, that I always wanted to do. There and now I had the opportunity to do them. And I traveled everywhere and I'm still traveling, you mm -hmm. know? And that this menopause thing is supposed to be so terrible you start breaking out in the sweats i, I found when i had a balanced diet and there was food yes, the, the food, sweating the, the sweating along I, with the part yeah the sweating i just want to say for the audience because the sweating is very prevalent and that is a cardiovascular condition that is duly mostly in this world due to stress right and due to anger and fear it's a vicious cycle that we women are on are put on also it's highly significantly due to the medical or lack thereof care that we receive right right, the, the, right. i just want to put that out there because because cardiovascular sweating and anger anger and stress it's a very very vicious cycle so and I, it's I just true about the it's anger beautiful. yes mm -hmm. it's true about the anger and so what happens is that you embrace and, and get angry a little bit more often because that emotion might be prevalent because, you know, things are a little bit imbalanced and unexpected and not in your norm. That norm we talked about, like the bubble of, of, of normality, right? Where we like to operate and then when things are upset in our routine and then, and we come to the unknown, it upsets us. Yes. And then we don't, we, we, we have this idea that, you know, everything's abnormal, everything's wrong yes. so then there's fear because it's yes. the unknown and because the things are ha happening to our bodies and we're not familiar with them yes and so and that exactly. that whole and exactly fear, and, and the medical attention well, actually, make us even less familiar they make it worse because they don't explain anything they just lie to us about what's happening i just i'm sorry i don't want to interrupt but to me that's something exactly whoa yeah go ahead i'm yeah 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 and then we, we, we go through this whole psychological piece that really contributes to the stress and the fear mm -hmm. and the anger, which mm -hmm. perpetuates the symptoms. And then we bubble up and we say, oh, I must be the definition <laughs> by which the definition it's of predicted. But that's not the case. Yes. It's not the case. It's not the case at all. I had a very easy and smooth menopausal experience, but I also paid a special attention to my health. I paid attention to 
eating. So, you know, people go, oh yeah, yeah. Everyone says eating, but there is not food in the Western food. All right. If you are eating processed food, you are not eating food. And you're I'll say it again. You're if killing, you are you eating are processed yourself. food, I'm going to say it very clearly. You are not eating food. If it doesn't grow out of the ground, have life, have <laughs> had life and was not put in a can, frozen, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for processing to get to your table. Fresh food mm -hmm. on the table. You cut it up. It's live. It still has life in it yes. to the body, nourishes and gives the beautiful energy source that the body needs and it changes the environment within the body to produce yes. and to exactly you know, true. Yeah. I'll food, let you say food has its every food item has its own energetic vibration every yes. food item when you consume it acts on one of your meridians or several that are the energy pathways in your body so all of this is a cycle of nature that we humans are at a very highly evolved level on, but we don't use that to our advantage at all. Right. I mean, how many people right. do you see shopping in supermarkets looking at food like emitting energy vibrations? And that's something that has to exactly. be cherished and respected because it is a gift that the universe gave us that we can use to work with our you know, energy vibrations. I mean, I, I haven't seen anybody. I've looked though. I've looked, you know, I've seen some people speaking on cell phones, some people cursing each other, some people being in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about the fruit, the fruits and vegetables. You know? <laughs> and then that the vibration that is coming from your mouth. Yes. The thoughts that are coming from your head <laughs> yes. have a vibration. And they are recorded in the waters of your body and the waters yes. of your body is traversing your body. And that yes. is what's echoing. And this exactly. is why the power exactly. of our words, the power of our thoughts have an impact. And again, the balance of our body has an impact. All of these things coincide with one another. Yes. And so when you decide to bring forward the best version of yourself because you're going to address being that better person and being in better health, all of those things count. How you think, how you speak, letting go of judgment, letting go of the fear. Mm -hmm. eating food that's actually palatable for your body, for your body's energy. All of these things are encompassed at once, not one. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, maybe I'll think about changing the other, you know, a year from now or so. Then it's not in balance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like what we typically do as a human being. We treat the symptoms instead of going right down to the, the core of the actual problem. And yeah. we just play whack-a-mole with the symptoms. That's all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You see, any information, I mean, again, I, I just, you know, I just believe that we humans, just from what I have studied and experienced and compared to, we are highly, highly evolved organisms. And any information we yes. encounter, you know, whether that's anger, fear, or joy, you know, is a sign from an invisible, you know, spiritual aspect of yourself. Um, so, mm -hmm. so that we have to you know, work, know, know these signs, know how to recognize them, know how to transform them. That's why the subconscious mind is so crucial, right? Right. Um, know how to embrace, but also do that from our center of higher awareness. That is, that right. is the, 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 the bottom line. We are creations and we are creations of joy our highest and most human i don't want to say highest in terms of oh my god it's something abstract that i have to i'll never be able to reach it's only for monks or it's only for for professional meditation or practitioner it's not true when i say highest that's not what i mean i mean the highest in terms of that which makes us most human most human is joy is the metabolism function as it at its most elementary vibration you know, which is the energy in the universe. Um, right. And how, right, how basic is that? Like every human everywhere has a body with three trillion cells, you know, and that shifts. That is, that is the revolution in human consciousness 
that we need. Just imagine when there was this this kind of push button um, um, shift, and I think it's it's Freudian that whole thing with with uh, with with anger or fear. Um, it, it's Freudian and mm -hmm. it's also related to the two world wars and also to some work that was done on psychosis at that time. I think that's where it's come from. There was mm -hmm. this whole shift in psychiatry where everybody adopted those principles, right? Right, right, you know, right. right, yeah. Now imagine there would be a, another shift, which is equally scientific, which would look, and that, that's why I wrote this book, right? Because this book looks at the, looks at our energy building blocks and at, you know, how they, how they work together and how we can use them for self-care. It's a very basic mm -hmm. book, right? But what if there were this shift again at the high level of the medical profession where every doctor would look at their patients as an energy vibration that manifests- And how doctor. hard is that? <laughs> how hard is that, really? It's, we just it's, choose it's not, not to do that. No, it's, it's not terribly hard. You, you need to know quantum mechanics. You need to know uh, yin and yang. You need to know something about- traditional Chinese medicine, but it's not, it's, it's an education. So if you go to medical school for these, for a decade for, and specialize in psychiatry or neurology, you know, you can specialize in this in addition and look at, you know, I'm just bringing to mind now the, the many times I was, cause I, I came to all of this because I also was very sick at one point and I, I spent a lot of time in emergency rooms and I'm just bringing to mind all those scenes I observed where you had, you know, doctors or registered nurses coming in and telling patients, okay, got to take this, take this medication, do this, here's your checklist and thank you and goodbye. If instead of that, you'd go in and, and see what, what emotion do I get from this patient? And what is their energy vibration? And then maybe write them a checklist, but it wouldn't be that hard hitting checklist. It would be something very different. It's, it's, it's doable. I mean, I personally, I don't know if I'm sounding naive or stupid, but it, it, it's- Oh, no, 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 no. It's doable. What? It's absolutely doable. And, and, and the, the technology is there we can tell what vibration plants are singing at and we can actually mimic their song with machinery. Mm -hmm. Why would it be unperceivable to have a human hooked up and, and then to see where the balance was in their sound vibration of their body? Because anyone who doesn't know, who hasn't studied um, about sound vibration, every one of our body parts makes yes. a sound. Exactly. Or every, yes. We are walking sound vibration. and. Mm -hmm. And, and and there is a a a, a study of human tuning, so yeah. we already know what sound and what chord each vibration of the body parts. Your liver has a certain vibration. Your 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 kidney has a certain vibrational yes. tone. Your you know, every every innard has a certain vibrational tone. Why would why is it unperceivable that we would go okay? Let's check the overall vibrational tone. Let's see where there's imbalance, right? Mm -hmm. Because imbalance really just means kidneys off. Okay, let's take a look at the kidney more, more, more closely. You know, mm -hmm. thyroid's off. Let's take the, look at the thyroid more, more closely. I mean, this to me that's like common sense. So no, why can't we expand it? If you can go through nine to ten years of medical school, residency for for three to four years, and each one in the mm -hmm. stages. How hard is it to add a handful of more subjects, really? And yeah. then to marry that which you know and that which you're embracing so that new innovative pieces can come out of the medical profession that allows for the ability for humans to heal. Yes, for a human to self, self heal because that if we were addressed by our medical practitioners in terms of our energy vibrations, our ability to self-heal would skyrocket. Self-heal, I agree with you. Skyrocket. That's the word missing, self, yes. People would get up and say, thank you, doctor. I'm going to see you next year because I have nothing else to tell you. I'm perfectly fine. And it could happen right. just like this, you know, instantaneously. Um, but 
But I think the reason why that's not done, it's it's fear. It, it goes it goes back to fear. You know, I I, I, I think it's more than more than just fear. I think it's twofold. I think it's fear and I think it's money. Oh yeah, I think I, that well, yeah, fear, absolutely that. money. Absolutely <laughs> money. Constantly it, needing to have to go pay to fix me, fix me, fix me, keeps keeps money in hand, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We we know that story. That's the age mm-hmm. and old as long as we can remember also. But yes, yes. it's fear. It's fear. Fear of um the, the fact that the way the paradigm is shifts too much and the way that things are needed are no longer needed and then it changes the whole game. I agree. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. I you realize it or not, this conversation's been phenomenal and we're coming up on an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have you back over and over again. I wanted to just give you a heads up and ask you, what is it that you want to leave with our audience regarding this topic? Um, with embrace, embrace the unexpected, embrace the supra sensible, and listen to your perception of joy. Um, because joy, or the joy like a fre- like a breath of fresh air. That is a sign from the invisible, from your, from your invisible within you, that your energy pathways are picking up something correctly, right? And and when I say, when I say joy and breath of fresh air, those of you who already listened to maybe others of our conversations, they know I don't mean that like you go to a meditation group and you have this wow marvelous meditation experience wow and then then you leave and it's all gone i i don't mean anything that is constructed in that way you know i mean joy in the common walks of life that can occur at any time during the 24 hour period it has no rule no regulation to it that you would know of at all and it is like a breath of fresh air and you do not know where it guides you at but it may be accompanied with signs in nature like in my case is i see certain flowers that i mean flowers you can find on the side of the road anywhere you know i'm not talking about any fancy flowers like flowers are green in a special color you know i can see the color stronger or bolder you know, that's that's what I mean when I say um, joy, perception, breath of fresh air. You see, that's the supernatural, right? You got to embrace that and listen to it. And it, because this is your energy pathways moving correctly, but because it's a totally different setup than everything else that we live in in this world. That's why we need that big shift you're not going to understand it. I mean, there is no rational mind right. answer to why do I see this flower now in this special light or this green is stronger than green usually is, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I hope I, um, I hope I, I answered the question. Um, it's embrace the suprasensible listen to joy and rest in the recognition of 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 your own higher truth and that's all that's required <laughs> right <laughs> yeah right yeah and i'm going to leave it at that what a beautiful statement thank you thank you so much for again being here on the infinite way having this wonderful, insightful conversation. And um, for those of you, if you're not familiar with Dr. Maria Ian's work, I really do suggest, suggest that you go to amazon.com and you, and you take a look at her mini books. You will find them amazing, full of wisdom and insight. And I, I, I can't just, I can't 
sing your praises high enough. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. All right. Just one more thing we want to add. We're going to be back and talk about the crucial importance of children, including toddlers yes. and babies in the first months of life. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For our, our, our next part. So thank you again, Dr. Maria. Again. Take You're care, welcome. everyone. You're welcome. Bye-bye.